Remember here what I say? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> hey there internet so today I want to talk with you guys a little bit about one of my favorite VR 180 cameras which is the QCam from Kandao so Kandao traditionally makes uh, more professional level cameras. This is their first forte into consumer level and I have to say it's pretty good for the price around $400. It does a dang good job. To preface this video you may have seen other videos about this camera from negative Nancy's or maybe belittling Ben's saying that it is totally don't buy. I could completely disagree. I think this camera is amazing and I think it's amazing not because it's a 360 camera. I think it's amazing because it's a VR 180 camera. That's where its real strength is. So I compared this with a couple of other VR 180 cameras such as the Lenovo. Here's the Lenovo to give you an idea, the sense of scale of those ones. And I compared it against the Zcam K1 Pro. So this camera is great but it's a little bit bulky. You can see there, this one's definitely a lot bigger than this one in terms of if you want to attach it to your actor. This one's gonna weigh him down quite a bit. I've been looking for a long time for a VR 180 camera that I can do daily VR vlogs with, and I have to say, I think the QCam is the closest thing I'm gonna get to that camera. Let me tell you a little bit about it. So, when I first got the camera, I started out by just playing around with it on Thanksgiving and I realized that I was getting my hand in the shot quite a bit. I learned right away that if you want to get good shots with this, you're going to need to use a selfie stick. This is the one that I like to use with the camera. Don't make the rookie mistake that I made by trying to hold the camera. This is not a handheld camera. It should only be used with a selfie stick and probably should have come with a selfie stick if you ask me, but that's a whole nother issue. So I did an early camera test where I took it outside to this spot, Tilden Park, called Little Farm, and you can see some of the shots were a little bit blown out, but a lot of these shots were really great, and I was very, very impressed with the sharpness and watching the 3D played back in the headset. The one thing that I realized I could have done better is trying to keep things a certain distance away like this shot in a headset is very, very um, uh, difficult to, to look at. It's kind of like being cross-eyed. So um, definitely I recommend keeping a good distance away from your subject when you're recording with this. Like about a foot or two away is, is best practice. But it was really fun to shoot with. It did really good with uh, these moving shots where I'm running, um, going down this hill. I was very, very impressed with it. So my next test was to see how does this compare with the $3,000 camera, the Zcam K1 Pro. I was pretty astonished at the results. I think the Zcam K1 Pro is slightly better in terms of the picture quality and you can do 60 frames per second and a lot of other things. But I think at a certain point the cost of $3,000 versus $400 is a huge, huge factor. And so for me, it's also not just the price and the quality, it's can I make this thing portable? So I did a test with it as POV. I'm gonna be posting that. The POV test went well. I was able to walk around and pick up stuff and, and it felt not very like uh, jarring or blocking my viewpoint or hurting my neck at all. It was a really easy to do um, shot and camera test. So I was very, very impressed with that as well. I could either take the Zcam K1 Pro up to paradise or I can take the QCam. I decided to take the QCam because I knew I would only have a couple minutes to run and gun with this. I was doing drone 360 also so I needed something that would be quick and easy to use and it just is the easiest thing in the world to attach this onto the end of a tripod and to just run around with it and get these very very steady shots. I didn't actually lock off any of my shots on a tripod just because it was that that quick we had to really really move very very fast. I knew I wanted to do a lot of moving shots. I didn't want to have to bring all this extra gear 
like a gimbal and all these things. I just wanted something very simple and easy and that was this right here. So this has been my favorite new toy. I think it's just incredible. The software that comes with it is free and it's very, very easy to use. I recommend editing with Adobe Premiere and then watching it play back on an Oculus Go. There's nothing quite like seeing your footage that you shot earlier that day played back in a headset. It's just incredible. So I highly, highly recommend it if you want a really cool Christmas gift. Definitely pick up the QCam for $400. It's a great way to introduce someone into this new format and new medium of storytelling. So if you're interested to pick up the QCam, I'm going to link in the description below to my Amazon uh, store. You can find this, you can find all the different camera gear and headsets that I recommend. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit that like and notification button. So that way you can find out when I post my next video, which will probably be tomorrow. And this video will be comparing the QCam with a new camera that has just come out called the Humanize XR. And it can do that. Now, I kind of worry about the mechanical function of that, like doing that every time when you're doing it. That's why I don't use the QCam and like switch from 360 to VR. I leave it in this VR mode and put this in the sleeve because I feel like the mechanism will eventually break down in both of these components. Just something to be aware of when you have a dual function camera like that. I don't know, write me a comment. If you have any questions about these cameras, write a comment below. I'm very responsive to the comments in the question area. Have a great day.